with. This is the Unit 1 seminar on exponent rules. So you often talk about um, exponent type questions in terms of powers. I refer to these as powers. And we need to review some of the terminology first. This is the base. We always call this the base. But the exponent is sometimes referred to as a power. So this is pronounced 2 to the power of 3, but I could also say to the exponent 3. Usually you say to the power of 3. But this is the terminology you're going to encounter in your unit guide. And we're going to go through the rules one by one. Um, first of all, the exponent law for multiplication. So you'll notice for uh, the first couple of questions, we have separate bases, but we can only, we're only going to combine our powers when the base is the same. So if I had 2 to the power of 3 times 2 to the power of 5, I mean, sorry, 3 to the power of 5, for example, I couldn't apply these laws. These laws only apply when the bases are the same. If I had 2 to the power of 3 times 3 to the power of 5, I would actually have to simplify it and figure out what the numbers are before I could combine. But when you have the same base, you can apply the exponent rules and life becomes a lot easier. So let's start with the exponent law for multiplication. So when I do my seminars, I like to give you the mathematical formula, but then always translate that into English as a rule that you can remember when you're studying for your test or when you're watching the videos, okay? So first of all, this formula can be written a to the power of m plus n. So if I had to translate this rule into English, the first step would be keep the base the same. That's very important. And my second part of the rule is add the exponent. So we're going to start off with a very simple example. x to the power of 4 times x to the power of 3. Now notice we're using brackets to represent multiplication because the actual multiplication sign can easily be confused as the letter X. So usually we use a lot of brackets when we're doing multiplication. So for this particular question, I'm going to keep my base the same and I'm going to add my powers, my exponents, 4 plus 3. So the final answer becomes x to the power of 7. Now remember, obviously I know you can do this in your head, but part of being an academic student and a student in MCR is that I don't care if you can do things in your head, I need to know that you can show me your steps, show me your work, and explain your answer. That's more important. If you can explain how you're doing things, but you still get the answer wrong, I uh, like that a lot more when you than when you're just trying to write the final answer. You will always get marks for showing your steps, or you will get marks if you have too many steps. There's no such thing. You will always get full marks for that. But when you do not show enough steps, that's when you lose marks on your test. So really, explain everything you do. Explain that you know which law or which rule to apply. So that's the first question. We'll make it a little bit more difficult. And we're going to apply the exponent law for multiplication when we have three different monomials. Now on the unit one test last year, for some reason, this is a very straightforward question, but whenever there's a negative number, sometimes that throws students off. So really pay attention when you are dealing with negative exponents. So my rule here is still to keep the base the same. So what is my common base? 
for this particular question, Samita? D. D is my common base. And now I'm going to take all my exponents and add them. So I have to the power of 4 plus, uh, two, sorry, 4 plus positive 2 plus, remember that it's plus negative 3. We're still adding, but you have to put that negative 3 in brackets just to make sure you know you're performing the correct operation. So I have d to the power of 4 plus 2 is 6. What is 6 plus negative 3? Alexi? 6 plus negative 3. So, yes, positive 3. So I have d to the power of positive 3 as my final answer. Very, very straightforward when we're dealing with monomials. It'll get more complicated as we throw in additional rules. So that's some grade 9 knowledge. Now, exponent law for division. The exponent law for division can look a little bit more complicated based on the way it's written. I can write it as a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n with the division sign, but more often than not, it is written in the quotient kind of fraction form like that. In both cases, the answer is to keep the base the same and subtract my exponent. So let's write that rule in English. And we are going to subtract. the exponents. So I'm going to write this or write the question in two different forms. Now, remember, when you are trying to identify the common base, that is not an x and a y stuck together. You're looking at the x variable separately and the y variable separately. So uh, a common mistake on the test is to say x to the power x, y, and then deal with the exponents. That is not the case. We are looking at each variable one by one. So first of all, I'm going to start with the x. I'm going to keep my x bases the same. And with the 7 and the 2, what operation am I using, Mohit? Subtraction. So I'm going to subtract my exponent. Same thing with my y. Keep the y variable the same and subtract the exponent. So your final answer is going to be x to the power of 5 y to the power of 3. Very, very straightforward. Set of addition, we are doing subtraction. It can look a little bit more complicated when we put some numbers, um, numerical coefficients in there, and when we write it in fraction form or quotient form. So, example number 4. Negative 36, x to the power of 11, y to the power of 5, divided by negative 9, x to the power of 6, y to the power of 6. My advice to you when you are dealing with uh, division questions like this we want to look at our common bases vertically and deal with them separately. So I'm going to rewrite this question. <coughs> 